Good morning, this is Shelby Law with the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Saturday, July 27, 2024. Fire potential impacts for the next couple of days include some wind and some continued thunderstorms. Today is really the last day of more widespread thunderstorms, and that's mostly just across eastern Idaho, up into western Wyoming, and far northern Utah. Some of these storms will be definitely on the wetter side across the, the southeast here, but there may be some more isolated drier type storms up in the east central Idaho mountains. Further south, we have some very strong winds over southern uh, and central Utah and down into far southern Nevada with gusts up to 45 miles an hour or so, and then some gusty winds along the Sierra front. On Sunday, the thunderstorms decrease, but winds continue across the central Idaho mountains and down south in Utah, and then some lingering winds continue even further on Monday with warming and drying region-wide. Yesterday was a pretty active day for thunderstorms, mainly across northern and central Utah and up into western Wyoming, and then there was this little band across uh, central Nevada. Um, some storms were accompanied by precip mainly here in eastern or in, uh, western Utah and up into southeast Idaho. Initial attack from yesterday shown here with the red dots. We did have some um, moderate initial attack mainly across the areas that we've seen recent lightning in Utah, eastern and eastern Nevada and up into western Idaho. Current ERCs are shown here with lower values across eastern uh, Nevada and parts of western Utah where we have seen a few days of um, uh, wetter type thunderstorms and some lower values across southern Idaho as well. The high values still remain over the central Idaho mountains, uh, western Nevada, and parts of western Wyoming as well. Uh, taking a closer look at a few areas here on the payette, the values have come down quite a bit from those um, record-breaking values just a few days ago, and they're expected to stay leveled out here in the green for the coming uh, days. And then in northwest Nevada, same kind of story. The values have decreased steadily over the past week or so, with a more significant drop in the last couple of days, um, to right around normal for the time of year. Satellite imagery for this morning shows uh, this area of low pressure over northern California that's really enhancing the winds across the southern Great Basin, uh, bringing some gustier winds to the Sierra Front area, and then also allowing some moisture to continue to move up into eastern Idaho, western Wyoming for um, those showers and thunderstorms this afternoon. For today, we have high risk issued for much of central and southern Utah, southern Nevada, and along the Sierra Front for those gusty winds out ahead of that trough, uh, and then high risk for some isolated dry thunderstorms in the east-central Idaho mountains. A closer look at those winds show a large area of gust 40 to 45 miles an hour in Utah and southern Nevada, and then gusts in western Nevada as well, though not as widespread. Minimum relative humidities are also quite low in these same areas down into the single digits with higher relative humidities over the north and east. Best chance for precipitation today is going to be in eastern Idaho, western Wyoming, and the far northern tip of Utah. Um, some more isolated, drier type storms are possible over the east central Idaho mountains. Maximum temperatures are on the cooler side today as that low tracks through the area with highs in the low 80s up north and then highs near 90 um, in Nevada and Utah. On Sunday, the moisture really moves out of the area for decreasing thunderstorm activity, but we just still do have those winds in southern Utah. Um, and then some winds moving into the east central Idaho mountains as well. So closer look here at the relative humidity, drier air expanding across a larger portion of the geographic area, minimum relative humidity is in the low, uh, in the single digits to low teens across the Utah and Nevada, and then we'll see those gusty winds once again in Utah and then up into eastern Idaho and western Wyoming. On Monday, another trough moves into the Pacific Northwest, but we're mostly going to be dry and uh, breezy still in the southern Utah and in the east-central Idaho mountains ahead of that next little trough. Minimum relative humidity is still pretty low everywhere in the Great Basin and those gusty winds still still breezy but not what, like what we're going to see today in Utah or um, and then east east-central Idaho we'll see some gusts on Monday as well. Three-day precipitation totals are shown here, reflecting mostly what we're expecting today with that moisture in eastern Idaho, western Wyoming, and northern Utah. On Tuesday, that little wave across the northern or Pacific Northwest moves across the northern Rockies. We could see some uh, storms move into the central Idaho mountains, really just the northern, really the northern fringe of our central Idaho mountains in the Great Basin. We don't have any high risk for those events. There could be some precip associated with a few of those storms. And then beginning Wednesday, the ridge really starts to build back into the Great Basin for decreasing winds um, and warming temperatures. 
on Thursday, the four the center of the high builds in towards the Four Corners area, which will allow a little bit of moisture to return to the Southern Great Basin. We don't have any high risk for thunderstorms just yet, we'll be, but we will be keeping a close eye on any returning moisture. And then on Friday, um, the ridge expanding a little bit further northward, and again, maybe allowing a little bit of moisture back into Utah and Southern Nevada. The extended forecast, or the um, seven day precip total, still showing those short term precip in uh, northern Utah and eastern Nevada, and then we see a little bit of a chance for precip over the northern central Idaho mountains here in that Monday to Tuesday time frame with that next little wave moving through. And the extended forecast shown here for August 3rd through the 9th puts the bullseye of temperature right over the Great Basin. Um, very warm, very hot, above normal, and then we see uh, a bit of a chance for some above normal precipitation, mainly to the southern Great Basin and back into Nevada. Um, with some more southerly moisture returning. That concludes today's fire potential briefing. Please check back tomorrow for the latest updates.